I would like to show you my old gift shop. It is a request from Dream Raccoon. She asked me to show pictures of my old store and to tell about it. And this is the only way I could do it. So, you are looking at one of the rooms from long ago. We started out with this 110-year-old building on Main Street, Corvallis, the oldest building in Corvallis, Montana, and it used to be a salon. I turned it into Nelson's Country Store. I uh, opened up around November and on into Christmas time with my ex-husband. This is what the side looked like before we painted it. I had another sign made that says Nelson's Country Store. Nelson's comes from my ex-husband's last name, and we thought it sounded very mercantile-ish. <laughs> This is the front, once again, with a little bit more close-up view so you can see what she used to be and what it became. Gifts. We did a little bit of copying and faxing as well. But that never really took off and we became more of a just country gifts. This is the before of the left side of the entry room as you first come in. Used to be a styling salon, of course you can tell. What I did is I went out to the local reclaimed lumber yard and they specifically gave me antique vintage, not vintage, antique wood from an old stable that was on the Daly Mansion property. Daly was a financial mogul in the day 1800 and into the 1900s. And um, they were finally tearing down one of his stables and I got the lumber from it. So it is antique and it comes from a stable. So I loved the rustic charm of it. And then um, I hired a young man who was about mm, 28, 30, somewhere in there. And he only charged $25 an hour. I was so lucky. But he looked at me like I was crazy when he heard what I wanted to do. But he cooperated and he found some circular sawn wood and placed it in all different crazy lengths and shapes for me. This is the back of the shop as you're looking, you know, towards the back of the shop. With the, you can see the door back there. Sla saloon doors that would uh, block the bathroom. So I took all of that out. And took out all the walls and little divider sections and um, uh, eventually we covered the wood floor it was just plain circular sawn wood and we covered it with linseed oil and that was all I ever did to it this is the front window looking out back, back the other way towards the street my old suburban sitting out there long time ago. And this is uh, how it looked after we got through putting the wood all around it and framing it. I never did paint the door. Just left it white. And this is the, uh, the first place that we put the cash counter. Uh, that's the front window also. You can see that we put up some really nice old antique reclaimed lumber beams on the ceiling to further create the atmosphere, the ambiance. This is my ex-husband, Bob Nelson. 
And this is the bathroom that was behind those original saloon doors. Um, I think that the turquoise color was real popular then, but this was my taste. I got a sink that was kind of retro and, you know, had to try to figure out how to get all that down on a wooden floor. It was pretty thick wooden floor, so we had a little trouble there, but it turned out real nice. Okay, this is the back room beyond the saloon doors, and it wasn't too complicated just to take out some fixtures and put in my own, because at that point we were kind of out of the funds that we needed to keep renovating. So we just made do with what we had. And I think, um, you know, I did fairly well at blending the colors to match. Later on, then, we took that same room and put up uh, some Wayne's coat and painted the walls cinnamon and gold. And we started hanging up um, the, uh, the, the tears uh, that we sold in the store. Okay, this is what the room looked like on the other side in the back. Mm, really old um, hearth there that had the probably an old wood stove to heat the whole place originally. Um, because when the building was owned a long time ago, it was a barber shop. And um, this is eventually what we did with it. Um, turned it into an office space and a cash counter. Um, this cash counter uh, was made by my stepdad out of reclaimed barn wood. And uh, we just put a fake, I mean it's a real stove, but we, just, we didn't burn it or set it up, but it was just for kind of the look of having a stove back there and dressing it up a little in the corner. So now we are opening up the store, and here it's um, right at the end of November and into Christmas, so we went ahead and put up some Christmas decor um, for our grand opening. And we um, had purchased this old, old wheelbarrow from an antique store in Idaho, brought it home with us because we loved it so much, and loaded it up with straw and gifts, let people know what we had inside, you know. And um, I'm just going to kind of go around with these photos from opening to the first year. It'll be a mishmash, but this was when we first opened. My mother, she just loved helping me with the store. Um, and this is late, a little bit later when we moved the cash counter to the other side of the store. We were all over the place, changing things all the time. But my mama used to help me um, at the store a little bit, and she just liked being there with me, and I loved having her. She painted a lot of artwork that I hung in the store and sold her prints, which you will see further down the line in this video. This is my daughter, Abigail. And when I first opened the store, she came out right away to visit and then to move here and help me. Um, it was really fun. She was very gifted with finances. And here we are together looking at the books and trying to figure out how we were going to handle the sales receipts and such. It was very fun having her. She went out and started her, her own gift shop eventually. And this is back at Christmas time again. Um, big display of park designs. Um, I knew I wanted to sell that product because I absolutely loved it. And um, this is the same side of the store at a different 
time, just maybe a little bit later, and I just loved the rusticness of the trees, so I left the Christmas tree up in the window. A little bit later, and um, I'm starting to collect more antiques to um, display things, and at this point I have Keepers of the Light candles. Okay, and so then by now I've moved the park design rack over to the other wall and tried to spread out a little bit after Christmas. Less packed, you know, easier to get around. I remember when I went out and got this chicken. <laughs> this taxidermy chicken was such a riot because... Nobody would see it at first being under the, the counter, and then if they bent down to look at anything, they'd jump back and give a little yelp, and it was just the funniest thing. I could have sold that chicken about a hundred times over because everybody wanted to buy her. Um, so real. The taxidermy um, makes things look so real. But eventually, I went out and got um, more taxidermy chickens to sell. Okay, this is the vantage point uh, towards the back room again. Um, this is just a pretty picture. To, um, there's nothing really to show there at this point. Then in that last picture, in this one, I have moved the cash counter to the corner of the store instead of the front. I couldn't make up my mind. I kept switching it around. Of course, the customers liked that everything was different every time they came in. <laughs> Here's back to the beginning um, when I had it at the front of the store. I just loved having the um, Lincoln and Washington pictures back behind the counter. Sold a lot of those uh, prints. Okay, so uh, back towards the door again. I'm just filling these walls and these rooms with all kinds of everything. Now at this point, um, I have gone out and bought a pot rack that has been distressed and that sort of thing. And then started selling uh, those grubby candles, you know, the, the grungy candles. And they're supposed to have an antique or vintage look, but in any case, we sold a lot of those. They're just fun. Um, I got a lot of my influence with my decor and my register and everything from the shops that I went to quite often back east and along the way there. I was also greatly influenced by the shop Cracker Barrel, uh, which I had never seen having grown up in California, and I don't think they had any in Montana till much later. But, um, so the New England, uh, influence plus Cracker Barrel and all kinds of other gift shops that we stopped at along the way influenced greatly my, um, sense of decor and style here in the gift shop. So, this is just another angle of the same room. There isn't much different there. Um, we started bringing in a lot of um, antiques from mm, antique stores that we had been to in our travels. We did travel a lot. And here we finally have our wrapping paper um, attached to the walls. My stepdad made those little holders for us to make it easier. And we also bought a um, antique reproduction uh, stereo to play CDs. This is just another picture that I took of a stage in the store that I just really loved. It's neither here nor there. <laughs> um, this is when I decided to try to sell candy in our gift shop, and um, I think this is later when I have less of it, 
but this display case is mainly full of candy and mm, artifacts from the attic, or I don't remember exactly where we found the old magazine and little items from this shop back when it first was built and it was a barber shop. Okay, so um, this is just another picture of opening day and we have for sale some re antique reproduction uh, game boards that you would actually hang on your wall. And we kept the trees close to the window to draw attention to the shop. This is a roundabout that we bought from an old um, antique store, but it's an old shelf that used to be in a bookstore. And you would just sell books off of this, but it turns all the way around, and it was pretty cool. Um, this is the back room at Christmas time. We just uh, stuffed the place to the gills with every kind of um, product we could think of. Uh, we even put the Christmas tree on the hearth at this point because we had no office back there. Um, brought in as many antiques and um, items that we could that would n n match or not clash with the blue and white wallpaper that was in that room. And, um, but at this point we do have the Wayne's coat up on the walls, which helps. Um, and if you look down at that red shelf down there with the clock and the chicken on it, um, that is just sort of an example of how I utilized every possible fixture I could find from houses, from my house, garage sales, wherever, um, and that was just a cheapy, cheapy little thing that I painted red and <laughs> blended right in with everything. Um, at this point, then I have my stepdad making stuff for us uh, because he was good at woodwork and he wanted to show off my mother's artwork, um, and I asked him to make some barn doors out of some rough wood, and he did, and I thought that was really nice. Um, let's see, just, um, we had our fax machine back there, trying to keep that part of the business going. Here's another kind of closer view of the doors that my stepdad made for my mother's artwork, and she did sell quite a few prints while we were open. This is just another vantage point toward the bathroom across from the cash register. We have put a old-fashioned phone in there at this time. Can't remember if we if it worked or not. Anyway, this is uh, after our big Christmas uh, grand opening, and um, we had such a smash hit that the Ravalli County newspaper went ahead and wrote an article on me and my husband at the time. And they called him Bob, but they called me Betty. <laughs> I was so upset about that at the time. Nevertheless, I was quite pleased that they would write about us. And here's a little bit of what they say. Walking into Nelson's Country Store on Main Street in Corvallis is like stepping back in time. Located just north of Bay's Hardware in a century-old building lined with wooden boards from one of Marcus Daly's stables, the All Things Country gift shop offers customers a chance to reminisce about days gone by. And that's just the atmosphere that owner Becky Nelson has tried to create. And they quote me and say, The reason I started this is I really love this kind of stuff. These are the kind of stores I like to shop at. People come in and comment that it makes them feel good. We even have hot apple cider to complete the atmosphere. Okay, well, let's see. Let's move on to um, 
at the house next door because the store was such a success that we ended up buying the building behind it. And this is what it looked like, if you can see back that yellow part of the house there. And um, so this is what it looked like when we were done. We had a customer come in and tell us, hey, you should call that the house next door since it is. I was like, oh, that's a great idea. <laughs> so we called the house behind us the house next door. We kept uh, the same hours, of course, with both, and it was a dual shop. You didn't shop one without the other. So this is what it looks like when you first come in, and when I first opened up the shop, the front room here is the only room that was opened. Um, I had my, my handyman um, lay the floors with... Um, just regular white pine and I told him to beat it up and make it scuffed and old looking and um, then I had him um, use a blowtorch and give it a rich old looking patina. Um, we took the walls and covered them with beadboard all the way to the ceiling and I painted it a nice um, Mm, I would say like a submarine yellow, <laughs> something that would look antiquish, and all this beautiful uh, red and creamy colors would look good against. Um, you can see the floor a little bit better in here. I had him just, you can see some of the scratch marks on the floor next to the edge of the rug. We want it to, to look like maybe a dog had been there or something, just totally lived in and... It created a beautiful effect that everybody enjoyed. And um, I brought in a stove, uh, an old cook stove, and made a really good prop. And um, eventually moved it to a different room. But uh, this is a unit that I had made by a local. I contracted a lot of locals for their um, skills and... Uh, I thought that turned out real nice. This is an antique reproduction that I brought in, and um, around, around this time, it's, it's springtime, I believe, because that's uh, uh, the sunflower dishes. Finally got the kitchen open in the back, and um, still didn't have a, a lot of money left for just renovating authentically, so we put in a vinyl faux brick floor and just painted and uh, I think it turned out real nice. I just loved the colors and they went uh, together very well with the items that I was selling. Opened up the bathroom finally and um, took that bathtub and covered it with a door. I thought it was so fun and funny to have a door on top of the bathtub, but this was not a working bathroom, so I needed to utilize the space. And so we sold soaps and lotions and oils and very wonderful uh, product from Conrad, Montana, by a woman who owned her own farm and her own goats, and she would make a goat's milk lotion and product. Okay, so this is um, my linen room. That's the room off the bathroom. And like most old houses, it just kind of goes all the way around from door to door to door. It's like a circle. And this was my linen room. I moved Park Designs products back here and bought much more of it because it had been such a success. The light fixture was cool too. I thought that was great. And then this was the Victorian room, the next room off of there. And uh, we brought in an old bed. Um, and um, I stuffed it with pillows made, handmade by a vendor right there in town. 
I never did consignment. I just went ahead and bought things straight from the people, and they were quite thrilled about that to make their money immediately. And that was how I preferred it, too, to keep my bookkeeping much more simple. So this is just um, the part, the other side of the bedroom where there were closets, and I took the doors off and put in shelves instead for display, changed the hardware on the cupboards, Another angle of the room where I have um, just some other product that ties into the foofy look of uh, Victorian and just pretty pastels. And the giant dolls were quite a hit with the customers. Everybody liked coming through that room, but they didn't buy a lot. So... Back to the picture I started with at the front of the store. And this is much later in the stage of the game where um, the whole store is opened up. Uh, I am in the back now with my cash register back there. And uh, this is the display case that I have. I wanted to tell the story of the um, gentleman that uh, owned this building way back um, when it was a barber shop and he came in and just loved what we had done. He was an old man by then and he he was so thrilled about what he had done that he said, here you go, here's my old um, straight edge razor and a couple of other artifacts from the store and its original day. So it was in that display case. And so here I have just put together a lodge section in the store. I'm trying to create a Montana, a Montana made lodge look um, where um, I sell things that are very um, wild and rustic, but also still sweet and uh, pretty. But I just loved the rusticness having several themes going in this store. So we had the lodge, as you see here, and then there was chickens, and then Christmas, and then Victorian, and the kitchen, and just there were so many different um, appeals for each space, and they were compartmentalized. So at this point, at the front of the store, I've just got a bunch of dishes, and so now we are headed into our summertime and everything is green and lush outside and I'm having an open house in the whole store but I'm only going to show pictures in the back store. I asked this family, could I please have permission to take pictures of you in my store shopping and they said yes. Um, you notice I just have... Um, a very light fair going on here, just springtime and summery type of uh, items for sale. By this time now, I have moved all my park designs linens into the Victorian room, and the Victorian stuff is gone. <laughs> I have not gone, but I I put it in a sale room, and um, so these guys are shopping in the um linens and that's, that guy was so cute <laughs> just shopping for me and posing for a picture this is the bathroom again in springtime and not much has changed but I've added some spring stuff and by now uh, the word is out that how healthy and wonderful that the um, Windrift Hill product goat's milk lotion uh, it, it was so effective that um Word of mouth was spreading everywhere, and we sold a heck out of this lotion. Windrift Hill from Conrad, Montana. I have to give a plug because these people were fantastic, and so was the lotion. And um, here's in the kitchen facing towards the bathroom, and you can see on into the room at the end as well. As I said, the, the house just did a full circle. You could go all the way around, and it was so fun. By now I'm getting some jams and jellies in on the Hoosier and all right, I think we are back to Christmas time again here. Um two thousand six probably. Um 
I still got the wheelbarrow, but I'm a little less enthusiastic about bringing stuff out front all the time. Oh, boy. Sometimes I got to be a drag, but there's a little Christmas tree there. And, um, but once you get in the store, of course, everything is much more mm, festive and beautiful. Um, here, uh, in, again, I've just stuffed the store to the gills during the Christmas holidays and it almost looks a little chaotic here but uh, many people used to say uh, that they couldn't see everything in one visit and that they had to keep coming back and they did <laughs> got to have people coming from all the way from like three hours away to come see our store because it was such an event and during the holidays like these, then we would um, surf uh, hot apple cider and uh, ginger snap cookies and have beautiful uh, music playing. Um, during the holidays, we had Christmas music playing, but we always had some kind of atmospheric um, music that we could listen to that was also for sale because we sold the CDs that people were listening to. And boy, you know, the feeling and the emotions that you had being in the store, the smells and the sights and the um, sound and everything. It just, it made you feel very good. And so people bought the music and they bought the candles and, and the things that would create that feeling back at their own house. So here we are coming out the back of the front store. You can see the sidewalk that leads toward the house next door. I think we're still at Christmas time and that is my ex-husband um, going through the front door. These pictures were taken by another fellow that enjoyed our store. And uh, he was trying to get moody here with the look of it. <laughs> and it was very, very nice of him. Okay, so Christmas time in the house next door. Um, things just keep uh, morphing at this point. Um, all of our fixtures are for sale, but I don't um, sell them for a very cheap price because I don't like having to sell them <laughs> and then change everything around, although I did change everything around a lot. This is the wood burning. No, it's not a wood burning. It's a gas stove that we put in to the house next door and put in a hearth to create more atmosphere and warmth uh, because um, we didn't have a really great heating system back there but so I filled it with Americana stuff and patriotic product because um, um, it just was pretty mainly um, mm, mm, the kitchen this is Christmas time I kept it pretty simple in the kitchen and just put up a tree and the tree just had some fruit on it and just you know I didn't want to get super fancy and sell a lot of Christmas product because you could easily get that elsewhere but I did have enough to choose from here in the sale room I turned to the other half of it into a Christmas section where you can buy a lot of Christmas product but I didn't have a ton of it because I just knew that um, it was a seasonal thing uh, but there was there was enough to choose from to to decorate your home with okay now we're just gonna go into the just my favorite times in the store and my favorite pictures and this was a time when well actually from the start we brought in bales of straw but um, the chickens and the chicken throws and the, the straw people tried to buy my little lamp back there but I had to keep telling them oh no that's that's for sale at Home Depot just go get yourself one there <laughs> But it created an ambiance that um, really surprised myself and others. Sold a lot of copper. 
and this was one of my other favorite stages of the store when um, I had the the uh, memorabilia on display in the display case because of the antiquity of it and the authenticity. Um, another stage of just beauty. Sometimes I would come in my store and just look around and marvel and think, oh, I wish I could decorate my house just like this. Um, I'm about as close to that now in real life as I've ever been because I never could have this before. Uh, the bathroom at its peak. Um, the bathroom's a funny story because these people uh, would come in and use it and I and stink things up so bad. I was just like, can you not see the matches there? Use them. <laughs> and, and this is another favorite uh, season for me too. Um, well, it's Christmas, no pun intended, but um, it was just a favorite time of mine when uh, we ha uh, had the lodge section put in. I had that counter, that display unit made uh, from a local. We got these dishes from a pottery uh, shop uh, back east somewhere, and I cannot remember the company name, but the best pottery that we ever had in the store always came from back east. Uh, beautiful, beautiful stuff that I ended up keeping. And this is the back room as you're leaving the front store. And eventually I had some lattice work put in there to privatize the storage area. And then um, put in this unit. Um, it was a secondhand, not an antique reproduction. It was just painted. Um, and then this is my favorite time in the fall and the house next door. This is the front room as you come in. And I just really loved the fall product, which is why um, I kind of decorate my house now in these colors because they are my favorite, favorite colors. And it was so warm. Um, so um, this is kind of just a different angle of the same thing. wanted to show you how it turned the corner and I've taken most of the patriotic stuff out of the store by now and sold it so I was always changing themes and changing everything constantly uh, fall again is the same time in the store but it's a different angle to show you um, the beauty of the sun coming in the window and the floors how they uh, really create mood and atmosphere. It's my favorite time in the kitchen. We have a dough table on the left side there, an authentic antique. Um, all of our antiques sold by the time we shut our store down. Um, but I, like I said, I purposely priced my fixtures at a high price because I really didn't want to lose them. I liked that the way that they held product and sold product. Um, here's a, when we had the stove in the kitchen and um, like I said we kept a lot of this stuff just for display so you could buy it if you could afford it. <laughs> it's pretty. Um, then see another view of the kitchen in back into the front room. I've got my Hoosier all packed with the jams and jellies, another type of food type of stuff. Um, table in the middle was made by my stepdad. He made a couple of farm tables for me. We sold them. Yeah, let's see kitchen facing the bathroom. You can see that I do not have the sink in the bathroom in service. Uh, and there's a dresser on the left side that's built in. That was there when we got to the store, um, to the, when we bought it. I had that wood put up on the wall all the way up. Okay, these pictures are going too fast for me. This is when I moved all the Victorian stuff 
into the old linen room. Didn't think all that purple, pink, and fluffy stuff would go well against the gold and cinnamon walls. But somehow it worked and we ended up selling off all of the foofy Victorian stuff. Here you can see how I've tried to blend the purples and the greens and the pinks against a gold and cinnamon wall. Eh, you know, it was pushing it, but um, it, it did the job and we sold the rest of our st uh, Victorian things off. And I stole the Victorian room to put the linens in because uh, I needed that much more room. The linens from Park Designs sold like so crazy that we actually had people stealing them from her store. And so I had my um, clever, clever uh, cashier. Um, she was able to come up with a, a plan to um, catch the thief red-handed in a very nice way that did not embarrass her or us. And so she never came to the store anymore. Uh, we were losing quite a bit of product because of that one woman, but other people. The stealing was not too bad in our store because most people in, at least so I found, in our town and in, in Montana were very honest people with integrity. Um, so I didn't have to stay on top of everybody. This is me and my ex-husband. Uh, I don't know what time of the of the year it was or anything, but this is just a, you know, a farewell picture because at this point, um, his business as a real estate agent and the economy as a whole in 2007 just took a huge nosedive. And uh, my store was not the bread and butter, so we had to liquidate and we had many people very, very upset and sad about us closing because they said they'd never had anything so nice in their town before. Uh, I was sad, too. But eventually, and shortly after this, uh, my husband and I ended up in divorce, and that was also sad, but it was meant to be. So we sold off both the buildings, the front store and the back store, and my ex-husband was the realtor for it, and he um, sold both buildings, and we were um, very amicable towards each other, and we are still friends today, and we have this beautiful and wonderful memory that we share called Nelson's Country Store. And it is something I will never forget. I enjoy talking about it, looking at it, and sharing it with all of you. Thank you so much for listening and joining me tonight.